Hello everyone. Uh, today this is your new guy. I am uh, going to be doing this. Uh, by the way, my name is, uh, you know, Cherry. Well, it says it on my channel. And we will be going for a magic thing today. Well, a magic opening unboxing for Theros Beyond, Se Beyond Death. I might be a little late for the newest set. But I'm really not because I have been buying packs. The only thing that is missing is that my recordings have not been so consistent for them. So hopefully this time I will get it right and I shall give it to you an unboxing. So to do so, please excuse my grimy table. Here it is. Those Beyond Death booster pack. It's a toolkit. We'll see what we get out of this today. I hear that the prices have dropped down, but for me, I have no interest in prices at the moment. I am just a, a simple collector, a mere collector in this utter world of gaming for TCG. Uh, let's go for, excuse my Grammy table. All right, so first off, we already see it in the back of the box. It says that we have a uh, deck builder's guide. I guess this is going to be based on the new set, but at the same time, knowing my previous... Uh, my previous <clears throat> bindings with this kind of set is that you basically get a outlook of, oh, hey, you're a beginner. Here's how this works. They don't even use it from the set of what it shows. You see these, Eldraine. By the way, uh, sets are the little symbols that you see right there on the corner where it says instant in that little section. You would see a little symbol. Those symbols uh, represent the set that you're playing. As of right now, we are playing Theros Beyond Death, as the you know, introduction shows. Uh, let's see what we got off of this little toolkit booster pack or whatever. I, I forgot what it's called. It is a um, deck builder's toolkit. All right, so far we got a pretty nice astral looking box. I'm going to open it. Okay, we have a divider. Makes it look like if it's more full, it's not really has a bunch of empty space and we have surprisingly we don't even have all of them completely from theros beyond death we only have one booster pack two booster packs nope i was mistaken one theros beyond death booster pack a throne of Valdrain, uh core set 2020 which is not bad because if uh you haven't noticed the scene 2019 uh kind of went downhill 2020 on the other hand is still pretty good war of the spark um uh, I'm pretty sure everyone who's affiliated with Magic already knows what happened with War of the Spark. It's not really the best news, but hey, it's pretty decent. It's not as bad as 2019. Thank God it isn't. And then we have uh, certain sections here. Green, black, um, and we have red. Let me just scooch that in there. Red and multicolored. I am assuming that they're all sectioned. Um, so first off, what I want to say is that this is actually a really nice design of the box. Green's not my favorite color, but hey, this is, I'm not gonna lie, this is actually a really nice design for the box itself. Um, definitely a good place to keep your cards set in. Aside from that, um, the divider, honestly, it's not really useful for anything unless you're trying to have a wide variety of collections from different sets, such as, like I said, Theos Beyond Death, or the Spark uh, 2020 Eldraine. I recommend you not to go to uh, what's called D to the Core 19. And that is extremely bad. I almost said D and D. D and D is an amazing game. What am I talking about? I love that. I have a little group of mine that we always play and do the dumbest of things. All right. So first off, let's go ahead and go for that green-looking Chimera. Uh, tree Shaker. Let's just go off and see what goes in the front. It says, all creatures able to block Tree Shaker uh, Chimera do so. When tr Tree Shaker Chimera dies, draw three cards. So this is basically anything that could scoop him out. Okay, Tree Shaker Chimera for two green and five, uh, five mana. We get a draw effect. Basically, we put him out. Okay, he's an eight, five. He attacks for eight. Uh, does he have trample? No. Uh, we don't have any trample, but hey, he's a pretty big blocker for what he can. 
And so for every individual card, there's not a lot of eight fives out there, or eights of life that can, you know, basically block this, unless you're running something way later down the game. Yeah, I usually play Commander, or also known as EDH. Uh, as for other people, they like to play Modern, which is a 60-card build, and Commander is a 100-card build with a one legendary creature. Well, aside from that, let's just stop with the introductions. I'm pretty sure you guys <clears throat> are watching this because you guys are interested in Magic the Gathering and the new playset, which is, uh, here it is. We have our second card. It is a red, uh, two red, red, well, two reds and a five for a flying double strike, five, five creature. It goes with when Terror of Mount Velus enters the battlefield. Uh, creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. So basically this is just, like I said, you get a bunch of creatures out onto the field, uh, you ready them for an attack, and then you pop this guy out there, you know, before combat, obviously. Then we have another big creature. Oh, these are actually great. Um, by the way, the commander I am running is a green, red, black. So knowing that we have three big creatures coming out in the front of this, it's just amazing. Next, we have Demon of Loathing for two black and five. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's two red and... Okay, two red and five, two green and five, and two black and five. That's that's pretty interesting. I, I actually like this. I, I like this so far for the toolkit. Um, Demon of Loathing. It has flying, trample, and whenever Demon of Loathing deals combat damage to player, that player sacrifices a creature. So... There you have it. It just goes for, goes to show you. You screw with that guy, even though the damage will go through and the creature might not be dead or might be dead. Um, regardless, it's going to die. Or an additional creature dies. Uh, now we have a four with two blues. It goes with um, Serpent of Yawning Depths. Uh, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents you control can't be blocked except by Kratch, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopus, well, by its own. And, you know, you basically get the point. Then we have Victory's Envoy, which is for two white and three, you have at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each other cre- Oh, this is a great- Okay, this is a great card for a commander, especially if you have nothing but proliferates and so on and so forth. Might give this to my friend Nano. Go check out- his channel, he also started making recently some Commander or Magic the Gathering, you know, stuff in his, I'll go ahead and put a link on the description whenever he has one. So aside from that, we have Glimpse of Freedom, which is for one and a blue, we have draw a card and you get to use its escape cost, which is exile five other cards from your graveyard and you pay two and a blue. You may cast this card from Graveyard for its escape cost. So basically, you get to uh, uh, take out cards from your Graveyard if they were useless, and then from there cast this for uh, around the same price, which is a 1 in a blue, now it's 2 in a blue. And you have the same effect. From there you exile it afterwards, I would assume. Uh, Fairy Vandal had this, it's a 1 in blue. It goes flash flying. Whenever you draw your second card a turn, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on Fairy Vandal. Uh, the, the good old Charm Sleep. It never untaps. Okay, Enchant Creature. When Charm Sleep enters the battlefield, tap Enchant Creature, and Enchanted Creature never untaps. It goes doesn't untap until, well, during its controller's untap step, so it'll just never untap unless the enchantment is destroyed. We go for Sea God Scorn. Uh, hypnotic Sprite, I don't think I've had this before. Two blues, counter target spell, converted mana cost with three or less, okay. Uh, good old, well, oh, I haven't seen this guy in a while. So, two blue and one. Caliph's power is equal to your devotion to blue. You go for a mysterious pathfinder, looks like a fairy. Human Peasant, Lonesome Unicorn, Spotfire Swain, Mountain, 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 just skip all the mountains. Okay. And we have for a Reeve Soul, Destroy Target Creature with Power 3 or Less, and you have a couple of copies of those. 
Haven't seen this one. It goes. Ah, Fermile Knight. You draw a card, you lose a life, death touch. Perfect one cost of black. Yep, this card is great. Now, I'm trying to get a Sir Conrad, but that, I realize that that's from uh, Throne of Eldraine. Sad to actually get a Theros Beyond Death kit, but still, a lot of Throne of Eldraine does come out in this um, set. Nothing but land right here. Yeah, you're getting a lot of lands with this, which is great, because if you're trying to build a deck, which is the Deck Builder's Toolkit, oh my gosh, I actually love this card. This would be great for my commander. I'm going to put that on the side. Um, ooh. Okay, we got a demigod. It's uh, Renata. Two green and two. For Renata's power is equal to your devotion to green. Knowing that my EDH deck is green heavy, I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side. It's beautiful. Okay, then we have a bunch of uh, red commons. Yeah. By the way, classifying commons is uh, black. Symbol has to be black. If it's gold then it's rare. If it's silver, then it's uncommon. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and go for that Mono Swamp Black on the side. Let me just, mm, I hate these plastic things. They open up, they're such a challenge to open up. Uh, see what I mean? You never, I can never really get my nails in between them. Okay, now that we have that, done with so right now for this set we just put these to the side for the black one we have a swamp 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 just just passing through the whole lands here oh that's a lot of lands oh unknown shores you tap one add one mana of any color that's useful for my commander uh, let's go. Oh, got a couple of uh, enchant like artifacts. Enchantments. My bad. Uh, what am I thinking? Okay, so you got bronze sword. Never seen one of those. A jousting dummy. Okay, you got a uh, traveler's amulet, which is sacrifice traveler's amulet. Search your library for a basic land card. I reveal it, then put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Okay, this is actually really good. Oh, another copy of that. I might as well give that to Fernando as well. Or Nano. Or whatever he likes to be called. Uh, let's see here. Please excuse my sisters that are in the background. They like to make their own little noises sometimes. Then we have uh, Toon Veil, Tree Folk, Carver, uh, oh, Beanstalk Giant. Always love this guy. It's always great to have one of them around, especially when you have a lot of lands. Aside from that, oh sorry. So when whenever we have a flux in intruder, unveil tree folk, curious pair, and we have a legendary creature. As you can see, the border of it. Um, legendary creature, human knight. It goes for whenever side fate the hinge hammer attacks another target attacking creature gets. Plus, plus, plus X, plus X, to where X is Skyfarin's power. This would be great if you have any proliferates or so on, you know? Okay, aside from that, let's go for that dual land um, opening here. See, this makes it a lot easier. And... Okay, he's evil with a couple of problems and issues. Let's move that to the side. Let's see here. We have your your old standard. Uh, let me move this over here, the whole set that I actually took out. By the way, as you can see, I saw, I saw a heraldic banner that I have pulled out. I don't know if the whole event is going on with that. But, you know, it's just a good question to ask. Another unknown shores. Okay, cool. I'll set that out to the side. Great for a commander. I know that for a fact because you got to put any color of anything. Um, what, Merrileaf Pixie. I had one of those. Uh, oh, Acolyte of Affliction. 
Let's see what you do. <clears throat> so, when Accolade of Fiction enters the battlefield, throw the top two cards of your library into the graveyard, then you may return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So any permanent card from graveyard, you basically get to put that right back into your hand, which is amazing because if you are in a, in a, in a bit of a pickle, you will be able to recuperate yourself when, you know, a big creature that, that you owned and worked so hard to get dies. Not like that ever happened to me before. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, aside from that, let's go on to the last pack. Just give me a second here to open. Come on. I hate these things. They're always so tedious to even pick up. Ah, Jesus. Okay. Cheese it's. Yep, that's right. I said it. Cheese it's. I am discriminating against them cheeses. I am lactose intolerant and I'm not, I am not afraid to say. They always give me diarrhea. I don't know what the problem is with Jesus. Why do they hate me so much? But there you have it. Okay, it's open. So we have yourself a dragon fire. Pretty sure you guys know that. Keep it going. I haven't seen this card before. Goes for sting fire. A three damage to any target for a red and two. And you also have if at least three red mana was spent to cast this it deals four damage instead okay so possibility claim to the firstborn oh we have another uh legendary here we have a demigod wow <clears throat> the power is equal to the devotion of red and whenever you, uh alexa or anax or another non-token creature you control dies create a one one red uh satire creature token um with this creature can't block the creature if the creature had power four or greater create two of them instead very useful if you had a lot of cards in play a lot of creatures at least along with that oh and here we have time Rift. beyond that equal to your devotion to black once again it just comes out uh, discard two cards unless you discard an enchantment card. Okay, cool. So we have a lot of blues in here coming out with a bunch of lands. And we have that human knight creature, that little boyo. Mm, let's go for. Ah, uh, here you go. The lion's claw. Pretty sure we all know that guy. He's uncommon, but you know. He's pretty common if you really do look at him a lot. It goes for Daxos, blessed by the sun. Let's see. Daxos, toughness is equal to your devotion to white. Whenever another creature dies, you control, get, enters the battlefield, or dies. You gain one life. Oh, but the toughness is equal to your devotion, not the power. That's, that's pretty unique. All right, now let's go for that War of the Spark that was here. We're going to be opening this little booster pack pretty, fairly easily since it's like a chip bag. Basically take that back end, open it up, smoothly open. Oh, yeah. Just take it apart. Toss that to the side. And we have a Rising Populace. Cool. No escape. And we have Grim Infinite Makeshift Forced Landing. Uh, put target creature with flying on the bottom of its owner's library. Ah, it's not like a plummet at all, but it helps. Then you have an Opportunist, Thundering Ceratok. It goes for travel. When Thunder Thundering Ceratok enters the battlefield, other creatures you control gain travel until end of turn. That'd be great. Only for the effect, though. Not so much for the cost, because it was a four and a green. Let's go for Epiphany. Yeah. Tamiyo's Epiphany, you could uh, scry for, then draw two cards. So you're able to just, like, say, oh, no, I don't want these. Put them at the bottom of your library. 
of Life Leak and Haste for a Bane Hound. It's a 1 1. Great for a 1 black. So I'll just put that onto the side for me. Land enters the battlefield under your control. I get to pull this. Oh, this is great for Fernando. Or, you know, Nano, whichever one you want to call him. Then I don't really realize what set this is, but I'll, sure, I'll make myself useful for that. Or more attuned to it, to that look. And we got a Core Set 2020 booster pack going in for, let's see here. Uh, it's always just a little. Sometimes it makes me think if it's resealed, honestly. I get suspicious for that. GameStop, you better not be lying to me. I'm just kidding. I don't think GameStop lies because I've actually pulled out a couple of good rare cards that would literally cost a lot more than it was for, to buy a pack. And then we got uh, growth, cy growth Cycle, which is target creature gains 3-3 three, three until end of turn, an additional 2-2 two, two for each card named Growth Cycle in my graveyard. It's only going to be one if I ran this in my commander, so I wouldn't really recommend that. We're going to go ahead and go for Challenges Eternal, Embercat, uh, Abscore, Menace has a oh, 6-5 Menace. This would be great. I'm all about those expensive cards. A 1-6. This would be great for Nano. Uh, Orc Warrior, Warlord, uh, Giants, let's go for enters the great two, two twos. That'd probably give you good because the more numbers, the better. Uh, Bishop of Wings enters the battlefield. Uh, under your control, you gain four life, and it's a two white. This would be great for Nano. Oh my gosh, and we got a Federal Abomination. That's a Thrall. That is an amazing card, as I've heard. It's a 5-5 five, five death touch for a 1 black and a 5. 